Prophecy Insights with Bro Stuff. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're going to give a minute or two for Facebook to notify everybody. Um, so, uh, hope you all had a good weekend. Going to uh, do... Hi, Rose. Uh, going to uh, just do a uh, general update today. Um, going to talk a little bit about Iran, uh, Israel, and, you know, what's kind of developing or could develop. Hey, Brother Jeff, there he is. Let me give him a wave. I give you a wave. Hello, hello, hello. So, I was listening to a radio uh, show on Israel National Radio. And, uh, hi there, uh, Jeff. Brother Jeff Massey. Yes, sir. He uh, did a uh, Facebook Live here just about 10 minutes ago. Awesome. If you want to get the Word of God and you want to get the truth, you go to Brother Jeff. Uh, anyway, uh, hi, Corey. Um, give you a wave. There you go. So I was listening to Israel National Radio, and Tamar Yona is the show that I listen to quite a bit. And she was talking about, you know, uh, war and the political climate in Israel and there are some that say, you know, Israel should just negotiate her way out of these wars and should appease the enemy. And you know how it goes, you know, blah, 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 blah. And Tamar uh, has a son <clears throat> that went to officer school in the IDF. <clears throat> Excuse me. And she, you know, uh, she was talking about, about there's just a time when you have to defend yourself, right? Well, I was thinking as she was talking about the situation there that's going on in Israel. Look, you have Iran right now. Uh, President Trump has put all these sanctions on Iran. Iran is in financial trouble. You know that uh, that uh, 150 billion that we gave to Iran. Th that's probably gone at this point because they poured everything into their military machine. And the poor people in Iran and different cities in Iran are really suffering. And so now the citizens in, in certain cities in Iran, they're rising up. And President Trump is trying to give them the support they need so that maybe there will be an internal change in Iran. So there are many that are going, oh, we could be on the verge of peace. And I'm thinking, okay, all you have to do is crack open your Bible. Go to Zechariah chapter 14, and you tell me when peace arrives. Just read Zechariah 14. It gives you the answer. There will be no peace on this earth, not a lasting peace until the Prince of Peace, the Messiah, Jesus, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, until he comes. That's what the Bible tells us. So all this hand wringing and all of this that's going on, you know, peace in our day. It's not going to happen. And that's just what the Word of God says. 
you know, Brother Jeff, peace and safety. That's what the Apostle Paul said. When they say peace, safety, and security, trouble's coming. Trouble is coming. Um, so, so we have to keep that in mind, okay? And uh, there's uh, Dolphin. Hey, Dolphin. And Letty. Hi, Letty. And uh, uh, Derek, hello. I like to at least acknowledge as many as I can without losing my train of thought. Because, you know, as you get into your 60s, the hamster wheel gets a little slow. So you've got to take that into consideration. So if I miss anybody, you'll understand why. Hi, Nancy. Welcome. So anyway, uh, so Iran is in financial trouble. Now, now, what about this for just a thought for a minute? Ezekiel 38, the 38th chapter of Ezekiel, says that there's going to be an alliance formed probably between Turkey, Russia, Iran, and Nor the North African continent, those countries. They're going to form an alliance, and they're going to attack Israel. An all-out attack. The Bible says in Ezekiel 38 that they're going to come onto Israel, and it's going to be like a cloud just covers the mountains of Israel as the enemies of God and the enemies of the Jewish people ascend upon the mountains of Israel. Who defeats those enemies? Pop quiz. I'll give you the answer, though. Pop quiz, who defeats those enemies? What does your Bible say? God does. He defeats the enemies. Anger comes up into the face of God. And he becomes incensed at the audacity of these uh, enemies of his and of his people that they would attack his land so violently. Notice I said his land, because God takes it very personally. And in Ezekiel 38, the Lord comes to a place where he says, I'm done, enough is enough, I'm going to deal with you myself. All of the enemies of God and of the Jewish people, that alliance, uh, Turkey, Russia, um, Iran, North African countries, that alliance, they get destroyed on the mountains of Israel. They don't even make it into Israel proper. God wipes them out. And those that get away go back, with, with uh, uh, they get backed up into the Black Sea area. They're humiliated totally decimated, and God humbles them under his hand, his authority, and he deals with them. Well, no one knows when it's going to happen, but what about this? What if Iran gets so desperate because of her economic situation now, uh, with inflation climbing and the cost of goods getting so expensive, people can't afford to buy bread. They can't afford to buy the essentials of life. And the people are starting to feel the pinch now. And a reminder, there are a lot of God-fearing people in Iran. Pray for them. A lot of your brothers and sisters, my brothers and sisters, they're in Iran and they're hurting really bad right now. And what when things get really bad, what happens is people tend to turn to the Christian and start blaming the Christian for all their problems. And so persecution ensues because people have to get their anger out or they think they do. And so they take their anger out on the minority populations usually, which means 
that the Christians in Iran are having a really hard time. We have to pray for them. Remember to do that. Uh, thank you. But the point is, is as the squeeze is put on Iran, what if Iran looks at Israel and goes, you know those oil fields that are in Israel? You know all of that money that's in Israel right now? Because Israel is booming. I mean, they are exploding economically. And what if Iran goes, we want that. We're going to go in there and take what doesn't belong to us. And we're going to go get a spoil. That's what Ezekiel 38 says. We're going to go take a spoil. So they invade. They get uh, talk Russia into helping them. You know, and maybe Russia just provides the armaments. I, uh, we're not 100% sure if Russia actually gets involved in the war, you know, full on, or just provides uh, and, uh, the, the weaponry that they need and provides the encouragement and political cover that Iran might need. But at any rate, Iran and this North African alliance, uh, Muslims in North Africa and Iran, they attack Israel. Maybe it's because of that, because of the prosperity in Israel. And they just go, you know, we're done. We're, we're, in, a pl we're in a place. We need to, to get help. We need to get money. We're just going to go take it. You know, a lot of wars are fought over natural resources and are fought because another country gets so desperate that they invade a, uh, a country that's got what they feel they should have and they try to take what doesn't belong to them. A lot of wars are fought over that, that mentality. So back to, to Mariona, she was talking about, you know, when do you really give it to your enemy and when do you uh, try to negotiate with them? Well, I wrote her, and here's what I wrote to her. Now with all this that I gave you, right, I want to, it's not long at all, I want to read to you what the email I sent to her. And I said, hi, Tamar, who wins a war? Question. Who wins a war? The one side who, parentheses, unfortunately causes more pain and suffering on the other to bring that enemy to a place of surrender wins the war. This is what eventually happened to Hitler. You know, that's what happened to Hitler. The United States got involved in the war. Thank God we did. And our brave men and women uh, in World War II just beat the daylights out of this guy and stopped him from taking over all of Europe. And it was a bloody, just horrific war. My father was in World War II. He was an army ranger and did most of his fighting in Germany. And some of the story, stories he told us were just, they're hair-raising. The stuff these guys had to go through. But anyway, uh, this is why war is so ugly and brutal. N no country should ever go to war without carefully considering what it will take to win that war. And if they cannot live with the answer, don't go to war. So you have to examine the situation, and if you're not willing to put more pain and suffering on your enemy and to decimate them in such a way that brings them to surrender, then don't even start the war to begin with. And I'm going somewhere with this, so be patient with me. Israel is in a war for her life, and she needs to take a posture that inflicts so much harm and pain on her enemies that the enemies of Israel will capitulate. This being said, the Bible tells us in Ezekiel 38 that Iran, or Persia, is not going away. And one day, 
Iran will attack Israel. Israeli politicians need to read their Bibles and put in place contingencies against this war that is coming. The Bible says the Bible says it, and it will happen, and we may be seeing the beginnings or the setup of this war uh, the, uh, taking, that's taking shape right now. Concerning Israel ruling over the entire Middle East, yes, Israel would do a much better job of it, but we must keep in mind that the Messiah is the one who accomplishes this in the Messianic era, Zechariah chapters 12 to 14. Are we closer to the Messiah's reign being established? I think we are when one takes the facts on the ground and the Bible into account. So that's what I wrote her. What was I saying there? Number one, number one, God is going to go to war with the enemies of the Jews in Israel. And he is going to inflict so much pain and suffering on the enemies of God and his people that they are going to surrender, and they're going to surrender to who? To Jesus the Messiah. Zechariah chapter 12, or 14. Read Zechariah chapter uh, 14. I'm pounding on my desk and so the camera moves. I apologize. I probably shouldn't do that. Um, I I just get so um, passionate about this because it's it's right there in front of us. All we have to do is read it. And, and you might ask the question, well, bro, Steph, huh? How can you be so certain that what the Bible says is going to happen is going to happen? Okay, I'm glad you asked the question. I can give you one group of people that prove that the Bible is 1,000% correct. And they're called, my people, the Jews. Just think about it. 4,000 year running history, the only group of people that have been totally kicked out of their land, out of their culture, their historical place of birth, scattered all around the globe and yet have kept their identity, their culture, their faith, and their religious belief system intact. No one else has done it. Only the Jews. Now let's add to that, that God said in Jeremiah, God said in Ezekiel, and I can give you just Joel, I can quote you prophet after prophet. <clears throat> Amos, all of them. God said, I'm going to bring my people back to the land. And they're going to be reestablished, and the land is going to flow with milk and honey. It is going to become like a paradise. That happened May 14, 1948. God honored that promise, that covenant he made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And the Jews in 48 came back to Israel. They're reestablished. Seventy years later, look at Israel. Economic prosperity like no other country in the world. They, they plant more forest trees than get consumed. They're the fourth largest produce manufacturer, exporter in the world. The cell phone that I'm using to do this live video... Israeli technology went into the chip to make it possible. Yes, same with your desktop computers. Israel developed the technology for all this stuff that we're using right now. How about medical advances? Some of the biggest medical advances. Just Google it up. How many medical advances has Israel been responsible for or Israeli doctors and scientists? It'll blow your mind. It'll blow your mind. 
cancer, diabetes, and many other diseases. Jewish scientists and doctors are responsible for many of the either cures or medications that make the life of these poor people who suffer better. So there it is. All you have to do is point to the Jew. That's why you can believe the Bible. If God said it in the Old Testament, what he said in the New Testament is going to be as accurate as the Old Testament has been. And then we have the historical figure, the Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Jewish Messiah, who came and died. Our calendar is set by his, his death, his burial, his resurrection. B.C. A.D., before Christ, after the death of Christ, A.D. Our whole calendar is set because of his life, his suffering on the cross and his death and his resurrection. Um, known fact, he existed, he lived, and he still is alive. So, um, you know, that's what's going on in the Middle East, right? Israel's being bombed, Syria... Turkey, Turkey is now the pre, uh, the prime minister of Turkey is now a dictator, and no one, you know, he the other day he took total control over the country, and he's now the single most powerful person, uh, probably <clears throat> in the, all the Muslim countries. He's probably it now. He's the top dog. He's the caliph now in the Middle East, the caliph, the, the man in control. He runs Turkey and no one can come against him. He took all of the, the parliamentary powers away. Everyone voted on it, put him back in office, and now he rules and reigns like a king, like a dictator. So that's what's going on there. Uh, Iran and Syria... Uh, they're taking over over and moving their troops uh, within 15 miles of Israel's northern border. They want to take over the Golan Heights. Israel will not let it happen. And uh, that would be considered, uh, just be aware of this, the Golan Heights is a defensive uh, mountainous uh, agricultural area. And if the enemies of Israel... Uh, took over the Golan Heights, they could shoot down and lob bombs down on Israel without any difficulty at all. So Israel's not going to let it happen. Uh, is, uh, Israel is not going to let the Golan Heights be invaded. Uh, God's not going to let it happen. So if they invade the Golan Heights and this horde of people start to ascend on the mountains of Israel, Pay attention. And yeah, you're right, Derek. I mean, the the pre, uh, dictator of Turkey, he's not God, of course. No, he's not God. And I'm not bringing that up because I'm giving him any power or, or authority. I just want you to know what the situation is. So we're back into this place in the Middle East right now. Like I, I've warned before, it's called the Middle East Dance. That's what I label it. You know, things get real stirred up, and then everything gets kind of quiet, and then they get stirred up again, and then they get kind of quiet. That's kind of how uh, labor pains are when a woman's going to have a baby. The contractions come, then they dissipate. Then they come, then they dissipate. That's what we're seeing right now. We're seeing the labor pains and how those labor pains, uh, they, they come, they go, they get stronger when they come along the next time, and then they dissipate, then they get even stronger. And eventually, what's going on in the Middle East, 
eventually it's going to lead to that Ezekiel 38 war. Now, is the rapture of believers going to come? Uh, uh, Corinthians chapter 15, is, is that going to happen before the Ezekiel 38 war or after it or during it? Time will tell because we don't know when this Ezekiel war is going to take place. Is the 70th week of Daniel going to start? In other words, the times of the Gentiles, the last final seven years of the time of the Gentiles uh, having governmental control over this planet. Uh, is that seven-year period going to start first and then the Ezekiel 38 war? Will the Ezekiel 38 war bring about that false peace process? That false peace narrative. Um, we do have uh, uh, Trump's son-in-law, Kushner, that is in the Middle East right now. And he's preparing, uh, I believe, July 9th, I think it is. July 9th, he's going to kind of unveil what Trump's idea of peace in the Middle East is. Um, now will that, will that peace process lead to something even more spectacular? Um, you know, where in, in the Old Testament, in Daniel 9, where it talks about the man of sin is going to confirm a peace Okay, that word confirm is mistranslated from the Hebrew. That word confirm shouldn't be confirm. It should be spectacular. Something more amazing. Something bigger. Much bigger and greater. That's what that word really means from the original Hebrew. It's a mistranslation, confirm. <clears throat> it looks like there's going to be some type of peace that's put in place. And then the man of sin comes onto the scene and does something even more spectacular than that peace. That false peace, by the way, because it's not going to last. Well, what could be more spectacular than that? Pop quiz. Pop quiz. Um, what could be more spectacular than that? The man of sin comes onto the scene and says to the Jews, you're going to get your temple. We're going to start building it right away. That would be spectacular and amazing. That would blow everybody away. Everyone would be blown away by that. So I got to wrap this up. Uh, I have uh, a conference call, a business I have to take care of. Uh, but I just wanted to reach out to you and talk about some of these things a bit. And what it all means is, you know, we should just be in a place where we're watching, we're praying, we're trusting in the Lord and living for him and doing what he wants us to do, which is to reach out to people very compassionately, very sincerely, he wants us to live a life that speaks about him in front of people. And then he wants us to reach out gently and communicate the gospel to people. And that's what the Lord wants. And so, you know, if you're watching a replay of this, and some of the things we've talked about, you're just, you're just going, wow. Wow. Man, that's that's amazing stuff. What do I do with that knowledge? What you do with it is you ask Jesus Christ into your life. The gospel uh, is really very simple. You know, we have to admit that we're sinners, that we need forgiveness. We confess our sin to the Lord. We humble ourselves, bow our knee to him. And admit that, that without him, we're going to be eternally separated from him. 
never to to see him or know his touch, his grace, his love, his mercy again. And that's called hell. That, that's what it is. The lake that burns with fire eternally burns, and it's never going to be quenched. You don't want to be there. The escape from that punishment that was never meant for humans, by the way, the escape is to say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you died for me and my sin. And you shed your blood on that cross and suffered for me. And I accept that. By faith, I accept it. And I believe that you are the son of the living God, the Messiah, the anointed one. You do that, Romans chapter 10, you do that, you mean it from your heart, and you're born again. It's that simple. It doesn't have to get more complicated. So go to my website, brosteph.com, scroll to the bottom of the homepage, and you'll see, you know, how do you ask Christ into your life? I've got a, a, a two little videos Take you eight minutes to go through everything. And then <clears throat> read the message there. Uh, take you a minute to read the message from Dr. David Jeremiah. He just does a great job of walking you through what's called the Roman road. And then I want to encourage you. Ask Christ into your life before the door shuts. And uh, now would be a good time. Today is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow, not in five minutes, not one minute, right now. And if you're listening to this and you don't know the Lord, today is the day God's knocking on your, your heart, the door of your heart. He's knocking. Open your heart to him. He died to give you eternal life. John 3 16 through 18. He died to give you eternal life, and he died to be sure that you could not and would not be condemned ever again, and he died so that the wrath of God will pass over you, and you will not ever experience the wrath of God. So ask him in your life today. With that, I got to go. Business is calling. God bless you, and I'll see you again on another Prophecy Insights. With me, Bro Steph. Bye for now, and thank you all for joining. If you like this, share it, comment. If you disagree with me, comment. It's, it's okay. I appreciate all of you. Thank you. Bye-bye. God bless.